Hi everyone, we'll be getting started momentarily. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining NeuroFlash's webinar, Measuring the New Virtual Call Center, Responding with Data in a Post-COVID World. We're excited to have you join us today and for us to talk about how Einstein Analytics can help you measure your agent's efficiency and monitor your contact center performance. It's never been more important to understand how your organization is running. Einstein Analytics can help you understand and optimize whatever Salesforce solution you have. But before we get this webinar kicked off, let me quickly go over some housekeeping rules. After this webinar, we'll be sending the recording out to you all for your convenience. On the Zoom platform to submit your questions, you'll see beneath the screen a bar pull up. In this bar, please click the Q&A button to submit questions anytime throughout the webinar. We'll have about a 10 minute Q&A at the end and can schedule a one-on-one -on -one discovery session with you as a next step if need be. We'll also be sending a survey to you after this webinar for you to submit any feedback. Let me introduce myself. My name is Michaela McCarthy. I'm the event marketing lead here at NeuroFlash. I'm really excited for you to hear from these great speakers today. First, I'd like to introduce you to John Heater. John has over 15 years of experience in AI and automation. He was a former worldwide head of the Cognitive Innovation Group leading Nuance's AI strategy. He was also the head of product and R&D for the Amelia platform at IPsoft before coming to NeuroFlash where he now leads our product effort to apply the latest AI and automation techniques to build a portfolio of products. Next, I would like to introduce you, Mitchell Zink, Senior Einstein Analytics Consultant here at NeuroFlash. Mitchell has been working with analytics for over five years and has a deep knowledge of Einstein. He is EA certified and has worked with a vast number of companies to help bridge their analytics gaps. So without further ado, I'll hand this over to John Heater to get started. Great, thanks, Michaela. Um, a common conversation that we have with most of our contact center customers is around analytics. Um, to be blunt, most just aren't happy with their analytics, be it the effort that's required, the efficacy of answering you know, fundamental business questions, just about everything in between. So we wanted to use this webinar to talk through strategies for improving analytics in your contact center. Um, today, I'll give you a brief introduction of who we are at NeuroFlash, and then I'm gonna talk through why your analytics strategy is so important, particularly now. Uh, then we'll quickly get to a demo to show you what an effective analytics strategy looks like as implemented through Einstein Analytics. Next, we'll go through five tactical steps you can use to improve your strategy today. And finally, we'll open things up to any questions you have or that today's discussion may spark for you as we go along. Um, so feel free to message any questions uh, in the questions section of the, the web meeting that you have throughout the conversation, and then we'll go ahead and address them at the end. Um, so just a little bit of context before we jump into it. At NeuroFlash, um, we've been focusing on AI and contact centers, uh, making analytics really a core component of what we do. So for those that don't know, the DNA of our team comes from three primary companies, Nuance, Haywire, and Salesforce. At Nuance, our team actually led sales, development, and integration of some of the world's largest enterprise contact centers with voice and digital solutions. At Haywire, um, it was a messaging product enabling two-way SMS, and it was actually acquired by Salesforce and drives the backbone of the SMS channel on the Salesforce platform today. And of course, um, Salesforce, which is the basis of everything that we do here at NeuroFlash. So collectively, the founding team has over 60 years of experience working in the AI and contact center space. Um, and that's why we feel so passionately about the importance of contact center analytics in driving successful business outcomes. Uh, we're also Salesforce Gold Consulting Partner. Um, We've got a dedication to customer success. You can see that reflected in our App Exchange reviews. Um, and we also 
do work again across service cloud and contact centers, extending into Einstein bots and digital channels, as well as field service lightning. Um, but let's talk about analytics. So why are analytics so important, particularly now? You know, neither the importance of analytics broadly in making informed decisions or the frustration I talked about before with analytics are really new problems. Um, but we do have three primary drivers at play now that make your analytics strategy a top line priority. So first, um, COVID in the current climate has introduced rapid changes around how our contact centers are organized. Uh, we've got large numbers of employees. You probably have a bunch of agents working from home, sometimes for the very first time. Uh, there's been forced changes in your staffing levels in response to both the pandemic and the economic environment. And there's a bunch of operational changes that are going into play as well. So net analytics discussions are, are paramount to contact centers um, as you're expected to do even more with less and making it critical that you have a crystal clear view on how you and your business is performing. Second, the amount of data that's generated from your contact center has exploded and the number of customers and digital tools continues to grow. So the reality is it's just not manageable or scalable to handle this amount of data manually through spreadsheets, which I know is how a lot of us currently have to process information. Uh, and third, though, fortunately, technology changes allow us to process, visualize, understand this data in really clear and scalable ways. So technology now is better at utilizing data um, than it ever has been. And it's, it's fueled huge advancements that we've seen in machine learning so that we can better elicit understanding from all of this data. Before we start talking, though, about what's possible in the future, I, I wanted us to level set on, you know, what's the typical contact center and how are we set up? So if you're like most of our customers, this is the spiral that you find yourself running into today. You've got a bunch of contact center agents that are trying to process their caseload, but they don't actually have a great view of what their current metrics are. You know, as they're trying to get feedbacks, they're being sent manual scorecards daily, weekly, sometimes monthly, just so that they can understand what they have been doing in an attempt to improve their performance. Um, second, you know, who is actually putting these scorecards together? One or sometimes an entire team of people who spend the majority of their time um, as a business analyst, just massaging data into spreadsheets, generating reports, again, completely manually, sending these down to your team of agents so that they have some visibility at a aggregate view of how they're performing, sending that information up to the executive team responsible for the contact center. And it's very, very manual and, and time consuming. And then finally, you're running the contact center and you feel like you're riding blind. Um, you don't have total trust in the data you're seeing. You don't understand why it seems to take so long for that information to to reach you to actually make smart decisions. And it never quite seems like the reports and information you're getting exactly answers the questions that you're trying to address. So it can be extremely frustrating. The one small comfort is you're not alone in this challenge. This is a general pattern we have seen and therefore it's, it's solvable because it's a case that many are in. Um, so that's the reason why um, we see a focus on Einstein analytics in this context um, to be extremely helpful. So because it's built directly to address most of these specific problems. So specifically, you know, a few clicks and you can remove the endless spreadsheets being sent around and just bring all of your data together. Um, built in visualizations help you make sense of your data. And ultimately, um, once you have all that information together, you can start to apply the capabilities of Einstein to really inject intelligence so that you can elicit insights, drive smart decisions around your contact center operations, your case management, and overall agent performance. Um, but uh, enough talking about analytics. Like I said, we wanted to quickly get you guys to a point where you could see Einstein analytics in action. 
you know, what a great implementation looks like and how it can help you to measure and manage your contact center. So for that, I'll hand it off to one of our analytics experts, Mitch Sink. Thank you, John. Um, so as, as John mentioned, uh, I think the, the big pain point here with contact centers is really in managing them, having uh, lots of data, lots of information to, to qualify and, and to investigate. So we're gonna walk through uh, a quick kind of day in the life of a contact center manager that has an, a number of challenges and wants to accomplish a few different things here. So um, something that's very common with contact centers is uh, having you know, a, a large workforce that's uh, you know, across different areas, different BPOs, um, the Salesforce org uh, that they're working in may be uh, disorganized and messy and therefore uh, you know, it's harder to gather all of the information into one place. Um, agents are performing across uh, different locations and at different levels. You know, we have training that is now made potentially remote during COVID, uh, higher turnover rates, uh, ramping up, increasing the number of agents, having new agents. So there's a lot of moving parts there. And all of that, as John mentioned earlier, requires a lot of manual effort to gather uh, actionable insights. So what we're gonna look at for Einstein Analytics today is uh, a few goals that we want to accomplish. So obviously overall, the, the goal is to increase productivity within the call center. So we can do that a few different ways. So we can identify uh, pain points for customers and help increase the customer satisfaction, customer experience overall, and therefore you know, potentially reduce the number of overall cases and, and contacts that we're having. Um, but we definitely want to be able to identify and provide training to underperforming agents um, for those cases that do eventually uh, end up with us. And we wanna do this all without spending an inor inordinate amount of manual effort uh, to gather these reports and we want them repeatable and consistently updated so that we have you know, near real time data to make these decisions on. So I'm gonna go ahead and steal the screen. And we're gonna jump into a Einstein analytics dashboard that we put together for contact center managers. This is our home screen. Um, where we can see uh, high level metrics for our current month of July. Um, this is uh, a sample uh, dashboard showing uh, contact center manager of a small uh, clothing store or clothing company. And uh, this is a multi-channel contact center. As you can see, we have chat, chat bot, email, phone, and even social. So what we're aiming for in this dashboard is a high level uh, overview of the contact center as a whole for the contact center manager to come in in the morning and see how our contact center is doing and start identifying some of those uh, issues and uh, areas for improvement that we were mentioning earlier. So as you can see across the top here, we have our current month metrics at a high level. We have the cases open to this month of those which cases have been closed. We have our average handle time across all of our channels, our average speed to answer, the case age in days, which is the time uh, cases are open and being worked after uh, the first contact if they weren't closed on that initial contact. We have our average customer satisfaction and of course our first contact resolution rate. So these give us a, a quick snapshot uh, of how our contact center is doing as a whole and gives us an idea of where we may need to uh, increase effort or uh, change up what we're doing. Um, and below that, we're gonna have some additional details and breakouts of that information to help us do some deeper dive analysis. So below that we have uh, cases by agent, and this is just a volume uh, of the number of cases each of our agents have handled this month. Um, so that's a good way to see who our top performers are just at a quick glance. We have the cases by status showing where our cases are in the timeline of being worked. It looks like we handled slightly over half of our cases uh, for the month. 
we have the cases by channel. We can see here that phone is you know by far our largest channel, while social is being by far our, our smallest. Cases by type. So this is describing what types of cases we have. And so as I mentioned before, this is a company that sells uh, sells apparel. And so you can imagine that returns are definitely our largest uh, case type. Um, but followed closely by product defect. And we're going to get into that in a, in a second. Um, but that's definitely something that I notice, you know, immediately just through this visualization, that that seems like a, a large number of product defects. To the right of that, we have cases by product. So this is just a quick breakdown of what products uh, these cases are associated with. Um, and so that's something that we can gather on those cases. Below those, uh, graphs. We have a timeline of cases opened and closed uh, by day. And this gives us a good idea of how our contact center is handling uh, influxes of cases and it would also help us identify if there's any um, increase in case number which would you know potentially identify a operational issue that we need to we need to take a look at. Here you can see that if the first half of the month we're catching up for any of these uh, spikes of increased number of cases uh, within a few days, but trailing off in the second half of the month, it doesn't look like we're keeping up as much. And so that's something that we're going to need to look at because it seems like we may be falling behind. And then to the right of that, we have a chart that shows customer satisfaction as well as handle time by the type of case. And so this is a good place to start to identify what case types may be causing both a bad customer experience as well as taking up time uh, from our agent's utilization. So at a quick glance, we see that the, uh, the highest customer satisfaction comes from website type cases. Uh, and those do take a longer period to handle than most other cases, but because you know, website cases, uh, issues with the website can be slightly more complicated and the customer satisfaction is so high compared to the other ones. Uh, I'm okay with letting that kind of slide. We see here that the quickest two items to resolve are lost packages and returns. Uh, it makes sense that returns are uh, the quickest to handle as that's something that we're very uh, used to dealing with. The two that I want to focus on here are actually our two lowest customer satisfaction, which are wrong items and product defects. And product defects takes um, you know six plus minutes to handle versus you know the five or so minutes uh, that some of their more common issues take. So I definitely want to look into that. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, product defect is actually our second largest case type. So with the Power of Einstein Analytics, I can quickly click on that uh, product defect part uh, chart, part of the chart, and it will filter the rest of the dashboard to just showing product de defect uh, cases. And I can quickly see here that in our product graph, we see that Chino Pants makes up a very large portion of these product defect cases. With that information, it makes me think that there may be something wrong with the manufacturing or the operations of those products. And so with this information, I can share this and contact the operations group, let them know that there may be something going on with Chino Pants that they need to address you know, on the manufacturing or operations side. And we can hopefully you know, reduce the overall number of these cases and increase the customer satisfaction you know, that our customers are facing when they're uh, purchasing these pants. So similarly uh, with wrong item, which is our third highest, you know, just by clicking on that, I can immediately see that women's shorts is the main culprit for uh, wrong item type cases, which is our other um, low customer satisfaction type. And, you know, with this information, I can then go reach out to our logistics organization and make sure that they are packaging and shipping the correct women's shorts, uh, you know, giving them a very actionable uh, way of increasing customer satisfaction and our overall uh, performance. So those are just a couple of quick insights that I can make from this homepage that are overall more systematic insights. 
But obviously, as a team leader, as a contact center manager, I want to be able to assess how my team is doing. So I'm going to go over to the agent performance dashboard here. And I can see here, there are a lot of different charts that give us information about specific agents. Um, at the top left, I see again that customer satisfaction and, and average handle time by type. To the right of that, we have the, excuse me, the handle time by channel, seeing that chat is almost 10 minutes, phone is about seven and a half minutes, and social is a very quick interaction at just over five. And then to the right of that, we have average handle time by agent. And so this is a quick and easy way to see how our agents are doing in comparison to each other, assuming that these agents are all uh, blended agents and have multiple channels uh, accessible to them. We can see that most of our agents are all kind of bundled in this one area, while Alicia is actually outperforming our other agents, uh, at least in terms of average handle time. Below that, we have agents by work item and customer satisfaction. And so this is showing the volume of cases that those agents are working crossed with the customer satisfaction. And you know, as we can see, Alicia, who is doing very well with average handle time, is much shorter than most of the other agents. She's also handling most of the, or the most number of cases. But what we do notice here is that she's actually our second lowest customer satisfaction uh, agent. And so that's something that we may want to uh, go and train Alicia on and, and look into more is, is she uh, uh, shortening these uh, interactions with customers at the expense of a better customer satisfaction? We can go analyze the transcripts, go talk to her, and make sure that she's prioritizing customer satisfaction rather than just meeting her metrics in terms of average handle time and the volume of cases. So similarly, uh, we can take a look at this uh, chart here and see that Betsy is both our lowest performing customer satisfaction agent as well as handling the least number of cases. Um, I know that Betsy is one of our newer agents, um, so I'm going to take a look and see if there's any training that we could provide her. So I can just go ahead and click on Betsy's uh, uh, bubble here, and again, it will sort to um, just her information. We can see here that her chat and phone are much higher uh, handle time than the average across all of our agents. Uh, at our top left, we can see that lost package actually goes from, you know, nationally, it's one of our quickest to handle uh, case types. But with Betsy, it looks like she uh, may be needing some additional help um, and, you know, potentially needs some uh, training around how to use knowledge articles or other tools in the system on how to address lost packages because she's taking uh, much longer than our other agents. And then finally, uh, at the bottom here, we have the handle time by type. And so we knew that earlier, uh, we've had a, a, a increase in product defects um, at, caused by those Chino pants. And we want to you know, make sure that um, because that is one of the longer uh, handle time uh, types, uh, we want to make sure that Betsy is both trained on that, but also uh, comfortable uh, with the amount of those um, type case types that she is receiving. And we can see here that she's had a couple of spikes in those uh, case types across this month that may be attributing to the overall lower, uh, longer handle time that Betsy is experiencing. But the key takeaways here, obviously, is that we can help her uh, decrease her overall handle time by helping her train on these lost packages. Uh, case types, which she is taking longer than the national average or the, the average across all of our agents, you know, and, uh, you know, hopefully she'll just get better as she uh, gets more comfortable with the system. So that was a couple of quick insights that we got looking at our agent performance. Um, but the other aspect that we want to be able to look at in addition to our agents and our overall call center is we want to be able to drill down to specific channels. So um, with uh, Service Cloud Voice becoming GA 
uh, this week in Salesforce, we thought it would be apt to show a phone channel breakdown uh, that could, uh, could be built on top of Service Cloud Voice or any other telephony system that we can integrate to. So um, this is our phone channel uh, dashboard. Like I mentioned, this is built on Service Cloud Voice data. And as you can see here, uh, it gives us high level metrics around uh, phone, so call volume, average handle time, average wait time, average work time post call, the number of holds. It also gives us an idea of where our calls are coming from in terms of the DNIS, uh, what our disposition is. It looks like we have a lot of shipping issues here and then even call sentiment. And uh, this is actually something very interesting that is available with Service Cloud Voice is that in uh, during the conversation on the phone, Service Cloud Voice is actually parsing the uh, transcript of that call and using NLP to determine the sentiment of the call. So in addition to having our customer satisfaction tracked by having uh, you know, after call surveys or other reach outs uh, you know, from the, the rest of the call center, we also have sentiment based on the call transaction itself, the transcript itself. Um, which is uh, great information in case of having, you know, uh, customers that are not willing to answer our surveys or any other uh, distinct feedback. And then obviously we have call volume versus ha handle time. And then we can see individual uh, transcripts here. Um, and, you know, we can drill down into a single transcript if we want to see why a sentiment was, uh, you know, the way it was. So uh, I hope that everyone enjoyed um, this quick bite of Einstein Analytics. Obviously, this is a small portion of the overall analytics package that Einstein has. Um, you know, we didn't show today uh, any predictive bits of Einstein Analytics, which is included with the, the platform. I think we're going to talk a little bit about that afterwards, but uh, just wanted to show what a general um, uh, Einstein Analytics dashboard could show for contact center. Great, thanks Mitch. So I will go ahead and take back control. Bear with me one moment. There we go. Um, so Mitch just showed you what a, a great sort of best in class Einstein analytics implementation would look like. And what I wanna do now is talk about how you can get started today. So I'm gonna step through uh, five key items. So first, how you can get rid of all of those spreadsheets and just automatically bring your data together. Um, it's, it's much simpler than it would seem. Number two, what are the skill sets you need to plan, implement, and ultimately maintain your analytics going forward? Um, three, some options to jumpstart your reports so that you don't have to start from scratch. Um, four, how you can really supercharge your analytics with AI once you get your foundation in order, and Mitch mentioned that a little bit at the end. And five, um, how to go about doing an analysis to benchmark how your analytics is set up and performing and sort of where you should be specifically focusing your attention going forward. So let's start with all of those um, spreadsheets, everybody's favorite. So if you're using wall-to-wall, -wall, you, you know, if you're a wall-to-wall -wall Salesforce shop, um, bringing your data together with Einstein Analytics is literally just a few clicks and you can bring everything from agent performance to cases to some of the channel information all in one view. The thing to note though is even if you aren't and you have um, you know, different external tools, third-party platforms, the reason that we like Einstein Analytics is that there's literally dozens upon dozens of pre-built connectors that'll automatically pull all of that data and link it in for you. Um, so 
you know, if you have information on your web on Google Analytics, you're running stuff on AWS, you have spreadsheets, whatever, if it's a common tool or platform, probably already a connector for it. And again, you deploy those uh, with your on-site analytics implementation and suddenly the hours of spreadsheet manipulation are gone. You have all of your information together. Um, so bottom line, it's, it's really easy to remove all of that manual effort to collect, clean, you know, email around reports. And instead you can start to free your team up to focus on actually eliciting the insights and then taking action on them. So what does that team look like though? In a typical NeuroFlash engagement, we, we tend to see three primary roles. Um, the first is the business sponsor. So you just wanna make sure that ultimately you're building um, not just interesting or prettier reports, but you are building tools that are helping you answer key business questions. You know, what is my case throughput? What is my digital channel adoption look like? How many agents do I actually need to staff to handle this volume? What will the, the queue times look like? Make sure that you have uh, a business sponsor involved so that you have that focus and everything is being done towards answering and then ultimately optimizing your contact center overall. Second, you do want to make sure you have, you know, an Einstein analytics champion and experts like Mitch and his team. They understand how to connect all of that relevant information, um, drive them into singular reports that'll then help um, push you towards those, those positive outcomes we were talking about before. So, you know, you want to connect things like case types to agent groups and handle time. Mitch was showing that before. So having someone that understands once you have that data in place, how to visualize it together so you can see the impact and causation through those trends becomes really important. Um, and finally, make sure that your Salesforce admin is involved. Um, they're going to help make sure that your org is configured so that you aren't missing opportunities to capture additional data and information to feed into um, the analytics platform. And then they're also going to be able to drive optimizations back into the service console um, based on what you're seeing so that you are not just seeing trends, you're acting on those trends and ultimately improving your business. Um, so third, like we talked about before, you've now got all of your data in one place, you know, spreadsheets are not being sent around. You've got a stellar team involved that's helping you, um, to be able to start thinking about how you're actually going to address the, the core challenges in your contact center and case management strategies. You want to consider, uh, pre-built analytics. So if you, are just starting from scratch. You may already have stuff built and you use that as your foundation. If you're coming in, um, you know, for the first time, you're, you're moving over the on-site analytics platform. The thing to also keep in mind is you don't have to start with a blank canvas. There are pre-built um, solutions that can sort of supercharge you and then you customize on top of that for the things that are very specific to your business. Um, one thing to, to call out is contact center analytics package. So that's something we have on the NeuroFlash side. It's on the app exchange um, and you can download that into your org. And suddenly you have a lot of the, the reports and insights that Mitch was talking about um, from Go. And then from there, again, you can build your own customizations. Um, and I'll hit this at the end a little bit, but we are offering a free 15 day trial on that as well. If you just want to see it and make sure you're actually getting some sort of value before making a full investment. Um, and then finally, you've got all of your information in one place. You've got the great team that's able to help you visualize it. Um, you went with a jumpstart package. So now you're really quickly actually seeing all of your information. You've got a really solid foundation. And what you wanna start thinking about is that, <clears throat> that phase two of how you push things forward um, and really add intelligence into your analytics strategy. So the other really interesting thing um, and that's powerful with Einstein analytics is the Einstein piece of applying AI and machine learning. So a bunch of interesting use cases two to call out in particular that tend to be easy ways to get started and see some, some quick value are one Einstein discovery. So you can put that in 
place, because again, you have all of your information together, it's able to process it and then automatically start to identify which trends are most important and what's causing those patterns. So you can start to see if um, certain segment of users are likely to, to churn in why, you know, be able to drive things around your agent performance and see what's causing those outcomes. So again, that you can take action. Um, you can also use Einstein Prediction Builder to predict and model results to ensure you're making the, the best decision on a go forward basis. So often analytics is about looking backward to see what's done. Now you can start to look forward and see what's the impact you're going to have and are you going to hit the goals that you've set for your contact center. So this is kind of the, the fun part, but it's important you get that foundation in place first and then you can leverage these additional capabilities um, to provide you more benefit. Um, so then finally, uh, get an analytics checkup. So as we've mentioned, and as you've seen, we've been doing this under our flash for a really long time. We're extremely familiar with the ins and outs of Salesforce, how to bring all the objects together, how to bring in external information. Um, we can help do an analytics audit for you for free. Basically look at the information you have in place, kind of help you benchmark how your setup compares to, to others, where, where you can improve and help get a roadmap on specific tactical things uh, particular to your setup to start focusing on to get you on this road to success. And then also, I talked about it a little bit before, um, but we have contact center analytics package, uh, managed package on the app exchange that we're offering a 15 day free trial for. So again, you can download it, see if you're getting value, kind of try before you buy. And if it is, hopefully it'll help you um, be on the path to success in your overall analytic strategy. Um, so with that, I will turn it back over to Michaela for Q and A on any questions that may have popped up over the course of the conversation. Thanks, John. Thanks, Ms. for such a great session. We got some great questions down below, so let's dive into our Q&A. Our first question is, can you bring in outside data sources into Einstein Analytics? Yeah, I'll hop in on this. Um, so uh, like we mentioned earlier, um, there's uh, definitely the ability to bring in outside information into Einstein Analytics. It's a, it's a full analytics tool. Um, I think the, you know, the, the core power is when, uh, you know, it's built on top of uh, Salesforce and, you know, the core objects are there. But as we mentioned earlier, there's a ton of outside connections that or co connectors that allow you to kind of out of the box in just a few clicks connect to AWS, Oracle, any of those other, um, you know, major common uh, data sources, as well as common integration and ETL tools uh, work with Einstein Analytics. So things like MuleSoft, Informatica, um, any of those will allow you to put data directly into Einstein Analytics and bypass core Salesforce, um, which can be a benefit uh, in the case that uh, your core Salesforce doesn't need that data, may be running up against data limits. Um, Einstein Analytics has a larger uh, data limit then your core Salesforce, and so you can bring in those external data sources without worrying about it. Thanks, Mitch. Our next question is with Circuit Cloud Voice, I know the telephony is in AWS. Can I see that in Einstein Analytics? Yeah, Michaela, uh, this is John. I could take that one. So uh, the short answer is yes. We, we actually did a webinar earlier this week to coincide with the launch of Service Cloud Voice, which I definitely encourage everyone uh, who has interest to check out just to understand everything there is to know about the platform in detail. But at a, a high level in terms of analytics, all of the agent activity um, that's in the, the service console is obviously just natively going to be in Salesforce and um, automatically uh, available for all of your on-site analytics reports. In addition, um, we at Neuroflash have built a voice insights package, basically gives you full granularity into all of the events that are happening in Amazon Connect from, you know, uh, numbers being dialed in, queue information, if you have a voice bot, being able to see all of that within a singular report in sign analytics, um, you'll have all of that availability. 
Thanks, John. Our next question, is Einstein analytics only for service? Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, so Einstein Analytics, although we did just show a service use case, as I mentioned earlier, is a full analytics package. Um, in fact, Salesforce has uh, templated apps for Einstein Analytics for almost all of their clouds, including sales, service, FSL, uh, and a few others. Um, in addition to that, there's always the opportunity to create custom dashboards. Uh, I've seen and built use cases on, you know, timesheet entries, um, you know, workforce management, as well as your common use cases around, you know, sales and service and, and other things. So uh, not just for service, it'll really help with anything. Thanks so much. Our next question is, how do I get um, Einstein Analytics? Um, yeah, I, I can talk to that one. Um, so if you want Einstein Analytics, reach out to your Salesforce um, account executive to get a license. So that'll give you access and availability to all of the features we're talking about. And then in terms of reports, again, either you can build your own or you can go to the App Exchange, um, search for Contact Center Analytics, and then download our package to also see those reports right away. Thanks, John. Our next question is, how can we use the predictive analytics with EA for the call center? Um, I, can, I can take that one. So if you want to use the, the predictive analytics, it's essentially another you know, widget that you can enable. You can key off of what information that you want to predict towards. Um, and then you can start to forecast that information on a, on a go forward basis. So really just a couple of clicks. Thanks, John. The next question is, I've heard that if I have customizations in my Salesforce org, I can't use EA. Is that true? Uh, yeah, so I'll take this. Um, no, uh, Einstein Analytics allows for any uh, custom configurations within the Salesforce org, we can account for that. I think this is a common misconception uh, around Einstein Analytics that's potentially associated with the out of the box uh, templated apps, um, which are best when used on top of a minorly configured Salesforce org. Um, but with some small customizations to those dashboards or, you know, completely custom dashboards, Einstein Analytics can uh, account for and report on uh, even the most customized uh, Salesforce orgs. Thanks, Mitch. Um, what does the analytics analysis look like? Yeah, I can talk to that. Um, so normally what we do is we'll look at your current reports if you have any, and then we'll also look at things like, um, you know, email cases, chat transcripts, call transcripts, and any metadata you have around them. So if you have timestamps, case types, et cetera, um, we're able to use that to map out what your analytics should look like. And then we can compare that to what, if anything, you have in place. And that ultimately drives a roadmap for filling those gaps. So we help prioritize where you should focus your time to get the biggest bang from the buck um, and a plan of execution going forward. Thanks, John. We're at time, so this will be our last question of the day. Any questions we didn't get to answer, we'll reach out to you personally and answer your question. Our last question is, I know you mentioned Salesforce Prediction Builder. Would that still work if I have a lot of custom objects? Yeah, I could take that one too. Um, short answer again is yes. So you can build predictions on any standard or custom Salesforce objects that you might have. Thanks, John. Well, I want to say thank you so much for joining our webinar today. We know your time is important and we appreciate you spending this time with us. We want to help you. If you're looking to get started on your Einstein analytics journey, be sure to reach out to us. As John said, right now we're doing a free analytics audit and strategic roadmap session and a 15 day free trial of our contact center analytics package. Please reach out to John Hosteller with his contact information is on this slide with any questions and to set up a time to talk. I'll be sending the recording out to you all afterwards as well. Thank you again for joining us today and we're looking forward to talking with you soon. Goodbye.